Now in this step-by-step -step troubleshooting video, I will show you how to check all the components on this Whirlpool Extra Large Capacity Dryer. Other model dryers are extremely similar. Now the first thing you're going to do is check to make sure there is 240 volts being supplied to the dryer. And I will now show you how to perform that test, which is located on the rear panel of the dryer. Now right here is the cable. Now looking at the power cord, each end is a 120 volt leg. So this is a hot wire coming in at 120. This wire here is another hot one coming in at 120. And this thin one in the middle is your ground wire. You're going to want to do an AC voltage measurement. Set your meter for a 250 volt or a 1000 volt range, AC volts. And you're going to want to measure between that screw and that screw and make sure you have 240 volts. If you have 240 volts across those two, then you're going to want to probe from each end to the center. You want to make sure you have 120 volts between that screw and the ground and between that screw and the ground. Don't only do the 120 to the middle on each side because you could be easily fooled if your circuit breaker is faulty and the loop is not completing because it will show 120 on both sides. So to verify that everything is working, you have to have 240 volts between these two outer screws and 120 between that screw and the ground and 120 between that screw and the ground. And I'll show you quickly, it's very simple. All right, my meter is set to the 1000 volt range and I have it for AC volts. I'm now going to touch the outer two together. And we have around 234, that's perfect. And then you want to check from the outer to the middle, should be around 120. And from the outer of this one to the middle. All right, so you just ruled out your power supply as a problem. Now there's always a chance that the circuit breaker in the panel has a very high resistance connection or a corroded connection between the clip on the circuit breaker and the bus bar in the panel. And as a result of that, once the heating element comes on, which is a heavy load and the motor, if that connection is weak, this 240 volts that you just saw a minute ago may drop way down. That could be a potential problem. So what you should also do is take that voltage reading and you'll have that 235, 240, and then push the start button and make sure the voltage still stays fairly high when the load comes on. If you're having a problem that your dryer is not working and then you go to push the button and then you see this voltage drop, that is a sign you may want to go check out your circuit breaker. Now you would turn off the power to the circuit breaker panel using your main disconnect. Once the power has been disconnected from that panel, you can then remove the breaker, inspect the clip on the breaker, make sure it's not arced and burned or heavily corroded. and also take a look at the spot on the bus bar that the clip on the circuit breaker attaches to because over time that can develop a lot of corrosion or arcing and then that will cause you not to have the voltage you need when you go to turn the dryer on. I've seen that many times with hot water heaters and I've also seen it with dryers. So that's another thing you could check out. If this all tests okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take all the screws off along the top here to access this entire panel and we're also going to remove all the screws along the back panel that you see here all the way across around and down and we're going to take this whole back panel off but before you do that make sure you disconnect power to the dryer alright I removed the upper panel behind the controls and in this case it was nothing more than a quarter inch nut driver now that the panel's removed, we can see the timer control and you can see the motor for the timer control. It's bolted onto the back. And on the other side, there is the start button. Now I'm going to remove the lower panel to access the whole compartment here. So let me do that and we will come back.
All right, now as you can see, the rear panel of the dryer has been removed. We now have full access to all the components located in the rear compartment. What I'm going to do now is point out each of the components, what they are, and then we will perform a few tests. The heating elements are located right inside this compartment here. This compartment is easily removed from the upper portion. Air is drawn in from the bottom, and as it's drawn in, due to the blower motor, which is located in that compartment over there, that blower motor is spinning fast, and it's sucking the air that's inside the drum and bringing it outside of your house through your ductwork. So as this is sucking on this side, the negative pressure inside your dryer is drawing in air which flows past the heating element. That heated air is then drawn into the dryer. Now in addition to all this, you have a thermal cutoff which is located right here. This is a safety switch. What will happen in the event that there's some sort of a fire or excessive heat, this will trip due to the excessive temperatures and this particular one here is not resettable. It is one time use only. If it fails, you throw it out and you replace it. You do not want to bypass it. If you bypass it and there's a, a failure here with the heating element or the high temperature thermostat down here, if that becomes faulty, then you're going to have a serious problem because you have no further protection because you bypassed it. So you do not want to bypass this cutoff right here. Located over here at the bottom, is an operating temperature thermostat which we will test coming up and that white strip you see screwed into that metal housing over there is a thermal fuse. If the temperature rises to a level that's too high what will happen? It's another safety feature. It will open up the circuit and then the dryer will no longer operate. Now before testing these components right here what I'd like to do first is go up to the top and take a look at the timer control and show you the start button and also test both of them. So let's check that out first. All right, we are now in the upper compartment and we're going to take a look at the start switch. It's very possible that your dryer is not going to start because you could have a faulty start switch. So it's very simple to check. You're going to take a continuity tester. It could be a light or a buzzer or it could be a digital multimeter like you see here. You're going to put it on a continuity setting or a continuity alarm setting or a low ohms range, the lowest that you have. Once you do that, you take one probe, connect it to one side of the switch, and you take the other probe and connect it to the opposite side of the switch. And then, once that's connected, reach around and push the button, and hopefully you get a continuity alarm. All right, now if you don't have the alarm, you're going to see a low ohms range. So I'll just put mine to zero. I'll put mine to 200, the 200 ohm range. All right, right now that's showing an open circuit. When I push the button, you will see ohms 0.4. All right, now the reason why it's not going to zero is because I have a lot of wire connected. I have jumper wires here. You should get very close to zero when you push that button in. So this is a good switch. I'll release it and you can rule that out. All right, now that we've ruled out the start switch, inside your dryer compartment, in this area here, you should find a schematic just like this. It may be tucked in the corner or taped down. You're going to want to remove that schematic. That schematic has some very important information on it for testing the timer. Now let's go take a look at the timer. That's the time control unit. Now over here on the back part is your timer motor. This is what allows the dial to slowly rotate through each one of the cycles and eventually stops the drying process. If your dryer works but it does not move, it stays in the same spot all the time, it just keeps running, 9 out of 10 times you're going to have a faulty timer motor. And you could try checking it with your digital multimeter. And what you're going to do is there's two wires coming off of the timer motor. You're going to put your digital multimeter on one of the leads and the other probe of your digital multimeter on, on the other terminal. And you're going to set your meter, in my case, to a high range of 20k ohms. 
and you're going to do a measurement. Now, in my case, when I check that, I get around 10,000 ohms or 10.3K. And that is about right for this type of a motor. Yours may be a little higher or a little lower, but that is the range. But if you're, t if you're not advancing through the cycles almost all the time, if you have no problem with your connections, if you verify nothing is loose, it's going to be the timer motor. Now to rule out the entire timer unit as the cause of why you're not heating or why the motor is not turning is very simple to do if you use that schematic that comes with the dryer. Now you will see right here, it shows different positions on the timer. Auto with uh, regular with high heat, auto low heat, it says cool down air. And then along the top you're going to see it says TM-WB. Now if you look at the back of the timer control, each one of those terminals on the back of the timer will be marked. So when you look at the back of the timer, you're going to look for a terminal that says TM. Then you're going to look for another one that says WB. So if you're going to test between the TM and the WB terminals on the back of the timer, and you set the heat to auto, regular, or high heat, what you should discover when you do a continuity test between those two wires is that it is an open circuit, which, is, which it states right here. The open box is open circuit. Now if you set it for timed regular or high heat, you should find out that the connection between those two wires is now closed. So the continuity alarm should be beeping. Now if I go to the end one, it says between BK and R. So if you look at the back of the timer switch, and you look for the BK and R terminal, and you set over here for auto and high heat or regular heat, the continuity alarm should be sounding when you probe between those two wires on that setting. So it's very simple to test the entire switch, use the chart, look at all the terminals, and set the proper positions on your control. It would not pay for me to do it on this particular machine because there is a lot of different settings to try and it would take up a lot of time on the video and more than likely your dryer is going to have a different control with different settings. Just refer to your schematic. If you do not have one, go online with the model number of your dryer and download one. This will let you know by doing these tests if your timer is or is not a problem. You can rule it out. All right, we are now back to the lower portion of the rear side of the dryer where the hose was connected was right here. This particular component you're looking at is an operating temperature thermostat. And what this particular thermostat does, it's rated for a certain temperature. I think in this case it is 150 degrees. When the temperature reaches 150 degrees on the air exiting the dryer going outside your home, what will happen, this will open up and will not allow any more heating to take place. So this is nothing more than a thermal switch. When it reaches a certain temperature, it opens the circuit, and when it's below that temperature, there is continuity between these two terminals. So you're going to take your continuity tester, and you're going to probe these two connections, and you should, with the dryer off, with everything unplugged, you do this, you should have continuity between these two terminals. If you do not, this is faulty. You're going to want to remove this and replace it. Now right above that, you see there is a white piece of plastic right here, a ceramic, and that is a thermal fuse. That is also designed, once the temperature reaches a certain point, it will blow. Now in this case, this is designed to be replaced. It does not reset. This one here will reset when the temperature goes back. This one will not reset. So you have to do a continuity test across these two terminals, and you should have continuity. If you do not have continuity, this is faulty, you will toss it out. Now usually if this part here blows, it's a sign that you may have a problem with the operating thermostat, that the operating thermostat is no longer cutting off and what's happening, the heat's being allowed to become more elevated and that's what causes this part here to blow. So in my opinion, if you're going to change the thermal fuse, be sure to change the operating thermostat too. They are not that much money. You can buy them online. You can find a good deal on them. Now you could also take this out of the dryer. You could put a heat gun on it or a hair dryer very close to the 
other side. If I remove this, there'll be a metal disc on the opposite side. And you can have your continuity tester attached and you should have continuity right now. And then as it heats up to a certain point, you should hear a click and then the continuity alarm should go off. At that point, if you let it cool off, it should come back on again. By doing that test, you can confirm that this is operating properly, but doing that test will not confirm if the temperature rating is still where it's supposed to be. For some reason, it could have moved up higher instead of going off at 150, 160. It could be faulty and go off at 180, causing this to blow. So it's a good idea to swap both of these out. Now, up top, I already took these terminals off, that's why they're like that. This is called, this is your high temperature cutoff. In the event that there's a problem below where your high limit thermostat is next to the heating element, in the event that this one here does not click off, what will happen, the heat will become excessive causing this one here to trip. Once this one opens circuit, it is not replaceable. Now this one was replaced with one that has a reset button. You could push this in and it will pop the disc back in the other direction. But the other ones that you test have a metal disc that will pop in and out. And when this one does trip, it is a one-time use device and you have to throw it away and replace it. Now, if this particular one fails, it's possible it's just from excessive use and these nothing lasts forever. I mean, constant heat over years and years of time may affect the value at which this uh, thermal cutoff will trip. Or, another possible scenario, the high limit thermostat you see here located next to the heating element could be faulty and by this not opening up the circuit to turn off the heating element, it will cause the cutoff switch to go open circuit and then you'll have to replace it. So once again, if you're going to replace this, also replace the high limit thermostat you see here. I'll just probe these right here just to show you quickly how this works. I'll take one of my alligator clips, clip it onto here, and I'll take the other one and take the red one, attach it to the top one. And as you can see, it's very low resistance. That's a good thing. Each one of the components I just mentioned must do what you see here. When you connect the alligator clip to it, it should come on. That indicates the circuit's closed and current will flow through. So just verify all those are good. Now I'm going to remove the screw from here and the screw from here. And then we're going to grab the bottom, pull it outward and down to expose the heating element assembly. And I'll show you how to test that. The screws are now removed. Let me take this from the bottom, pull out, down, and you can flip it over. And as you can see, nothing but coiled resistive steel wire. And that's what it looks like. Now to test the heating element assembly to make sure it's okay, we are going to set the digital multimeter to the lowest ohm setting that you have. In my case, it's 200. You're going to find where the two wires go. That's this connection here and the red wire behind it. Take your digital multimeter, put one connection on one side, Take the other one on the other end. Once that's connected, you should see around 10 ohms. It could be a little higher, a little lower, as long as it's in and around that range. At least you know that the element is testing fine. Now, if you have no continuity here, if it's an open circuit, you're going to want to take a look at all the coils, make sure there's no breaks. Now in the past, I've had one where the wire burned in one spot and separated. You could very carefully take the two ends that broke, get a pair of Lyman's pliers, and twist the two ends together extremely tight where it broke, and you'll be fine. I've done that in the past, have had no problems with it. Just make sure whatever you do, do not allow anything to touch the metal part of this housing. Everything is being held up by these ceramic posts. Make sure the coils don't touch any of the metal parts of the housing and you should be good to go. You're also going to want to leave one of these attached. Take, the, take it off. Leave the other one attached. Put this to a higher range of 2 million ohms and then touch the metal part of the dryer. By doing so, 
touch the metal part of the dryer with the other lead and nothing should happen. If you see something happen here, that is indicating that your wire is somehow touching the metal housing and you're going to want to correct that. You should have no continuity and no reading show up when you check from one of the heating element terminals to the ground of the dryer. Once that test is complete, you're good to go. You can put all this back together. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the door switch, make sure that door switch is working properly. And in order to do that, we have to remove the top lid. You're going to pry between these two layers on this particular washing machine. Gently pry from the side. And you're going to do the same thing on this side right here. Pry up. Over by the lint screen, there's two screws. Remove those. And then once that's done, you can lift it all the way up to access the compartment. You can push it all the way back, and it should stay just like that. In order to test the door switch, this wire right here is going around for the door switch. You can see right here is a harness, and right over there is the actual switch. You're going to disconnect this harness. In order to release this harness, you got to put a, just place two small screwdrivers, one in above this opening, and flip it over, and put another screwdriver in above that opening. Once it's spread apart, it will separate. Now once you separate this connector, you're going to take the two wires right here that go to the door switch down there and you're going to put the continuity tester back on or your digital multimeter or your digital multimeter on a continuity setting and you're going to open and close the door and make sure you observe that the digital multimeter or your continuity tester is responding to opening and closing the door. You should have continuity and then no continuity. If you're having a problem that your dryer continues to run even with the door open, that's a sign that this switch is stuck with the contacts closed. So just make sure you check the switch out. If it works perfectly, push it back together and you're good to go with the switch. Once you've completed testing the switch, leave the connections apart and remove the screw that was right here. I removed it already. And on the other side of the front corner, also there, remove that. Then you can pull the whole front outward. Once the front pulls outward, the drum will drop. That's not a problem. And then you could pull the whole front panel up and away. Once this is removed, we can access the motor. Now with the front cover removed, you can see the belt that goes over the drum. If yours is cracked or damaged, it's very easy to change. I'm going to show you. I'm going to go lower now. In order to change the belt, it's not a problem. You're going to lift up like that, hard as you can. And when you lift up, then you're going to be able to get the belt here and pull it around the motor shaft. And then it will go through this opening, and then you could slide it off the drum. Then you could slide the new one onto the drum. You could make the loop like you see right here, tuck it through this hole, and then when you push up, it'll be loose. You could put it over the shaft and then let the tension go back. So it's very easy to change the belt if you have to do that. Now on the left side of the motor, you see a harness with the red wire on top, then a green, then a white with a red stripe, then the blue with the black with the red. The blue wire going into the motor is a power wire going from that thermal fuse. So we can work on the motor, is we're going to lift this up, take the belt off the pulley, push it through the hole like that. And as you can see, we're good to go. The belt is off. I'm going to slide it out of the way. All right, you can see the drum has now been removed. The drum rests on top of this wheel here, that one there, and then it also engages over onto this lip with a seal. Now that that's out, now we can get a good look at the motor. At one end of the motor, you have the part where the belt goes onto the drum, 
and on the other end here that part goes over to the blower. Now once power is turned on the motor will start to spin first. Once the motor turns on what will happen the centrifugal switch that's in here will engage another switch closing the contacts and allowing the heating element to turn on. So the causes of your dryer not heating could be faulty cutoffs, faulty thermostats, faulty thermal switch, faulty thermal fuse, a faulty timer, a faulty door switch. You can also have a faulty centrifugal switch inside of your motor. And if the contacts don't close here, then your heat will not come on. Now it's easy to test. We're going to remove the harness. Once you remove the harness, you'll see that the two red wires, the two red wires, the heavy ones, you want to make sure that the connection between this red wire and that red wire closes. You want to make sure there's continuity on the switch between these two terminals when you push in on this centrifugal mechanism, like that. You push that in, and then you should hear a beep, letting you know the circuit's closed, and when you let go, it should go off. So let's give it a try. Put one on the bottom, one on top, and let me push the switch. That's how you test it. At least you know when the motor starts spinning that the centrifugal switch is engaging and closing the circuit, allowing the heat to come on. So you could rule out the switch as being a problem if you have no heat. Now after you check to make sure the centrifugal switch works, the last thing you can do is check the windings in the motor, make sure everything looks fine, that they're not burned. But you're going to have to do a resistance test. You could put your meter on a low ohms range. I have mine set for 200 ohms. You're going to check each set of windings. Now the main winding according to the schematic is the blue wire here in the harness and the white. And that measurement should be between 2 and 4 ohms. And the same applies for the start winding, which is the blue and the black wire. So what you would do, this is the second and third terminal up. You would check between the second and third terminal with your digital multimeter. Make sure you get that reading or close to it. And then you would check between the blue and the white. So you check between the third one up and then the third one down from the top. And make sure you have a good reading there between 2 and 4 ohms also. You're also going to want to check between the blue wire which is the third one up, and the ground of the machine on a very high ohms range of around 2 megs. What that does is ensure that there's no connection between your windings and the ground. If these tests all pass, then you could rule out your motor, put this all back together, and that is it. I hope you found this video very helpful. Please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much for watching.